Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Vermont Craft Tours. Today I'm going to be telling you about my favorite winter soup recipe, which is butternut squash. And um, I may not be giving you exact amounts in this walkthrough, but we'll, I'll link to the full recipe in the show notes so you can get that on our blog. Um, it's been unseasonably warm this autumn, and so um, we haven't really been able to wear the, the warm clothes um, or enjoy typical fall weather, um, but yesterday it finally got chilly, so I'm looking forward to making this recipe later today. Um, it's based on a recipe just for roasted squash, um, and that comes from Jamie Oliver, The Naked Chef. This was, I believe, his first cookbook, um, or at least his first best, uh, well-selling cookbook. Um, and it's a very simple recipe for roasted squash. Uh, a lot of his recipes just have a few ingredients and a couple of steps. So if you're not familiar with him, he is world renowned, but if you don't know his recipes or have never made his recipes, um, I highly recommend him. Um, but this is basically a, just a soup, a continuation. So the nice part about that is you can make the original squash recipe, serve it as a side dish, and then a day or two later you can make this yummy soup. Um, for the recipe you're going to of course need butternut squash. Um, you'll need some broth, some olive oil, some garlic, and some spices. And the spices can be a little more flexible. I don't necessarily stick with Jamie's original written recipe for that. Um, today I'm going to use cumin, ground chili flakes, dried coriander, fennel seed, and dried ginger. Um, sometimes I use celery seed, cinnamon, allspice, or other warming spices, but I typically wouldn't use all those flavors together. It can get a little complicated on the palate if you throw in everything. So best to stick with two or three and then experiment from there and see what you like the best. Um, for toppings, you, you can add a fresh cilantro if it's in season, a dollop of sour cream, some plain yogurt, or some paprika. Um, or maybe one or two of those. Um, something else you might need is, for preparing your spices, is a blade style coffee grinder like this one. Um, these aren't actually very good for grinding coffee. They just have this simple blade that sort of crushes um, the coffee beans unevenly, but they're great for grinding spices and often you can find them, you know, cheap used one at a garage sale for a dollar or in your local thrift shop in the kitchen section. So I highly recommend getting one of these just for grinding spices. It saves a lot of time and it grinds them pretty evenly. And the other tool you'll need is an immersion blender. And I'll show you a picture of that if you haven't seen one before. Um, it's just the, the kind of blender that you can stick right into a hot soup pot and pulverize your ingredients rather than having to transfer to a blender and then transfer everything back into another pot. Um, definitely saves whoever's doing the washing up, which is usually Rick, so he appreciates that. Okay, so the basic recipe is you're going to combine your spices, your garlic, your olive oil, and make a paste out of that. And then you're going to smear that all over your cut-up squash. I usually cut my squash just into quarters after I've taken the seeds out, so there's not a lot of chopping involved, and I leave the skin on because that prevents a hard rind from forming while the squash is roasting. Roast the squash, and then you would just serve it um, that way as a side dish. So you're gonna take that leftover squash, you're gonna peel the rind off, add it into a pot and mash it up. I usually use a potato masher. And then um, just add your broth and warm it up on the stove and then use your stick blender, your immersion blender, to make it into the consistency that you want. You can leave it a little chunky, or you can make it nice and smooth with that immersion blender. Um, it goes great with maple cornbread. The soup is a little bit warming and spicy, so the maple cornbread's kind of sweet and nutty, and they go really well together. And I'll be showing you how to make the maple cornbread and posting that recipe in a future video. So look for that. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.